When no one lived on this planet, Earth humanity was born in Africa, a continent that became the birthplace of tradition, culture, and religion. It was there where life started for the very first time, bringing the species that would dominate the world within the next few thousand years. Life thrived in Africa, and humans started to interact with each other. At the same time, there was no trace of humans in any other part of the world. Wherever humans would be found within the next tens of thousands of years would actually stem from Africa. This makes Africa the land we should observe and know about if we want to understand humanity, its culture, beliefs, and religions. How did early humans worship and who were their gods? It turns out that people in Africa had already found religions that often defy reality and redefine human intelligence about the presence of a supreme being. In this video, we will tell you about the prehistoric African religions that made us have beliefs we hold to this day. Let's get started. Long before the emergence of ancient cultures and organized religions, the Homo sapiens species emerged from the heart of Africa, specifically the region we now identify as modern-day Ethiopia. From there, our forebears radiated outwards towards the Mediterranean, the Middle East, and the Eastern regions. Africa isn't merely the ancestral homeland of our species. It stands as the very cradle of humanity itself. But how can we verify this bold assertion? Well, the evidence lies deep within the African soil, where the unburied remains of Homo sapiens can be found across the continent, leaving no room for doubt about its role as our birthplace. That's where we know that we are going in the right direction to trace humanity and what shaped humans of that time. In comparison to other regions of the world, Africa's archaeological riches span from the fossil-rich Great Rift Valley to the fascinating rock art of the Sahara. Each artifact serves as a testament to our shared heritage. As we journey from the heart of Africa to the land of the pharaohs, ancient Egypt, we discover the roots of civilization running deep into the African continent. This is vividly reflected in the art, customs, and deities of ancient Egyptians. Extraordinary discoveries from the Great Rift Valley, including ancient hominid fossils found in Ethiopia and Kenya, provide invaluable insights into our early evolution. It becomes clear that our journey as a species is profoundly intertwined with the African landscape. We can trace our path as Homo sapiens back to Africa, the continent that cradles the oldest remnants of our species, dating back a staggering 300,000 years. This tells us that the story of humanity genuinely started amidst the vast and diverse landscapes of Africa. In Africa, we not only discover our oldest fossils, but also the genetic imprints of our shared heritage. Consider Lucy, the renowned 3.2 million year old fossil discovered in Ethiopia in 1974. This groundbreaking discovery revolutionized our understanding of human evolution. Lucy belonged to the species Australopithecus afarensis, offering essential insights into our evolutionary journey. With a blend of both human and ape-like characteristics, Lucy symbolized a key transition between our primate ancestors and modern humans. Her exceptionally well-preserved skeleton enabled us to study her anatomy, confirming the emergence of bipedalism, a significant milestone in our evolution, and further solidifying Africa as the cradle of humanity. Also rooted in Ethiopia, the very place where Lucy was uncovered is the Ethiopian traditional religion, predating the arrival of Christianity and Islam by millennia. Since we are talking about Ethiopia, and Lucy, the first human, was also found in Ethiopia, we can precisely know the very first religion of Homo sapiens and how it evolved with Homo sapiens. In turn, this belief system contains a wide range of spiritual beliefs and practices deeply ingrained in Ethiopian culture. It is marked by a profound connection to nature, ancestral adoration, and a belief in supernatural forces. It's important to note that the Ethiopian religion is not a monolithic belief system, but rather a diverse regional custom. In other words, we find out that not only the first humans believed in God, the Creator, but also plural creators, gods. This profoundly suggests that humans, even in their earlier years of inception, held various beliefs about the things they had not seen. They could not all agree on the presence of a single God. 
It's interesting to know that the earliest religions in Ethiopia, which existed thousands of years before Christianity and Islam, are still found in modern-day Ethiopia. Though its practice varies among different ethnic groups, each contributing their unique cultural elements. The Aksum Empire, which existed in present-day Ethiopia, practiced a polytheistic faith known as the Aksumite religion. This belief system evolved from the Bronze Age into antiquity and featured a pantheon of gods, with Marem being the supreme god associated with the sky, rain, fertility, and stars. The Aksumite kings were regarded as direct descendants of Marem, hardening their divine legitimacy. In addition to deity worship, ancestor veneration played a climactic role in their religious practices. The Aksumite religion exerted a significant influence on the empire's political and cultural aspects, evidenced by the construction of temples and elaborate celebratory rituals. However, this distinctive belief system gradually faded as Christianity and Islam gained prominence. The lesser-known pre-dynastic Nubian religion of ancient Sudan offers intriguing insights through archaeological findings and historical accounts. It exhibited several similarities with the ancient Egyptian religion, hinting at considerable cultural and religious exchanges. Shared deities and religious iconography, featuring motifs like lions, bulls, and snakes, were prevalent in both pantheons. Notably, Nubian and Egyptian religions also embraced sacred symbols such as the Ankh, symbolizing eternal life. Nubian burial practices, particularly in the Kerma culture, mirrored those of the Egyptians, featuring pyramid-like structures and tombs. Both cultures shared a belief in the afterlife and provided grave goods for the deceased. The close proximity and historical interactions between Nubia and Egypt facilitated cultural and religious exchanges, evident in the adoption of religious practices and titles by rulers from both civilizations. The extent of these influences varied depending on the historical period and specific cultures involved. Dedun, a lion-headed god symbolizing strength and protection, held a significant role in ancient Nubian religion. Associated with wealth, prosperity, and agricultural fertility, Dedun was also linked to the annual flooding of the Nile River, which brought nutrient-rich sediments for bountiful harvests. Nubian rulers often sought Dedun's blessings for the prosperity of their kingdom. Despite the decline of the Kingdom of Kush and the beginning of Christianity and Islam, remnants of Dadun's worship are observable in archaeological remnants and inscriptions, reflecting the enduring connection of the Nubians to nature and their aspirations for abundance. If you see the ancient paintings and on the walls of various tombs found in Egypt, you will see a female figure with the body of a human but the head of a lioness. This is actually the lioness-headed goddess Sekhmet, famous in ancient Egypt for her attributes related to war, healing, and protection. Another ancient Egyptian religion is Kemet, which was a complex polytheistic belief system that spanned millennia. It held that gods governed every facet of life, and the pharaoh was considered a god on earth. Key deities included Ra, Osiris, Isis, and Horus. And the Egyptians believed in an afterlife where the soul would be judged, and if deemed worthy, granted eternal life. Archaeologists have uncovered some of the world's oldest structures in Wadi Halfa, which is modern-day Sudan, previously known as Upper Egypt. These structures, dating back a thousand years BCE, consisted of simple dwellings comprising oval depressions lined with sandstone slabs. It turns out that they served as mobile homes for ancient hunter-gatherers. The Egyptian concept of Ma'at, representing cosmic order, finds parallels in Dinka's beliefs, highlighting shared spiritual ideas. Before Egypt's centralized dynastic rule, as early as 3100 BCE, the Egyptian Book of the Dead depicted a ceremony where the deceased's actions were judged in the afterlife, a practice rooted in the concept of Ma'at. Interestingly, this becomes the core idea of the present religions as we see the idea of destiny or Qadar in Islam. That's when we are forced to ask, is Islam the only monolithic religion? Well, the answer is no. You see, all the religions we have today have been shaped precisely by the beliefs Africans held tens of thousands of years ago. The same is the case with Islam. The Atenism centered around the worship of the Aten, the god that surfaced in the 14th century BCE during the reign of Pharaoh Akhenaten. Akhenaten, an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, 
elevated the Aten, a sun deity, to the status of the sole god. In a profound demonstration of devotion, he even changed his own name to honor this deity. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. As part of his religious reforms, Akhenaten relocated the capital to a new city and centralized worship around the Aten, resulting in the closure of other temples. However, these monotheistic reforms did not endure beyond his reign. Following his death, his son, Tutankhamun, changed the Atenist reforms, restoring traditional polytheistic worship and erasing most Atenist influences. Further, in going deeper into West Africa, we found the earliest historical records emerging. For example, the most famous ancient Greek historian Herodotus made mention of a group known as the Atlanteans. According to Herodotus, the Atlanteans were a tribe from Bolgios, residing in the western parts of North Africa. He described them as people who lived near the Atlas Mountains, which are situated in what is now Morocco and Algeria. Herodotus portrayed them as skilled charioteers and formidable warriors. Venturing even further south, we discover the Yoruba people of ancient Nigeria. The Yoruba, a West African ethnic group primarily located in Nigeria, but also found in parts of Benin and Togo, practiced a religion with resemblances to ancient Greco-Roman paganism, with polytheistic belief having gods and goddesses. One of the deities is Ishu, also known as Alegba or Ishu, a central figure in the IFA or Orisha religion of the Yoruba people. Interestingly, Ishu is complex, slay and fond of pranks, but is a god often depicted as a trickster. He serves as a messenger and mediator between humans and the other Orishas, as well as between humans and Oludumare, the supreme being. Ishu's role mirrors that of Hermes in Greek mythology and Thoth in Egyptian mythology, acting as a link between the physical and spiritual worlds. Much like an angel or messenger deity, such as Mithras, in Yoruba religious ceremonies, Eshu is invoked at the outset as a protector and gatekeeper, necessary to open communication channels and ensure that prayers and offerings reach their intended recipients. Rituals dedicated to Eshu frequently involve offerings of palm oil, cola nuts, and alcoholic beverages like wine, believed to appease him. Despite criticisms from Islamic detractors who have sometimes portrayed Eshu as a devil or malevolent entity, he is neither of these. Rather, he is known as a trickster who brings misfortune to those who fail to offer tributes or lack spiritual experience. Eshu also fulfills the role of a divine messenger and negotiator between negative and positive forces, enforcing universal laws. He is believed to improve the potency of herbal medicines and esoteric practices such as alchemy. The Yoruba people view Eshu, along with other Orishas, as timeless beings that transcend human notions of time existing since the dawn of time and inhabiting the spiritual realm. The Orishas are considered intermediaries between humans and the Supreme Being, Oludumare or Olorun. They are seen as accessible and can be invoked. In Yoruba cosmology, Oludumare, the Supreme Almighty God of the Yoruba people, is not considered an Orisha, but rather the creator deity associated with wisdom, purity, and justice. Obatala, often represented as an elderly man, holds a revered position as the father of all the Orishas in the Yoruba tradition. Sango, known as the god of thunder, lightning, and justice in Yoruba tradition, embodies power, bravery, and masculinity. Yamoja, the goddess of the sea, motherhood, and fertility, is recognized as a caring and protective figure associated with compassion and healing. Interestingly, people still worship Yamoja in Africa, preserving this belief for thousands of years. Ogun, the god of iron and war, symbolizes strength, craftsmanship, and determination. Considered a blacksmith, since during that time wars were fought using iron weapons, Ogun was actually responsible for whether an army would win or not. Oya, the goddess of wind, storms, earthquakes, and change, represents transformation, female power, and the spirit of commerce. She is also responsible for the communication between life and death and souls, making her a powerful goddess of that time. Osun, or Oshun, the supernatural goddess of rivers, love, fertility, and beauty, 
is linked to femininity, sensuality, and prosperity. She is actually the goddess who makes the world beautiful, spreading lushness and even love in the hearts of humans. The worship of these deities involves diverse ceremonies, rituals, and offerings, including drumming, prayers, dance, divination, and the presentation of specific foods, drinks, and potions. Devotees perform these rites to seek the favor, guidance, protection, blessings, and healing of the Orishas. Often, participants experience altered states of consciousness, similar to the Eleusinian mysteries in Athens. Another religion is Vodou, known as Vodun in Africa, with origin thousands of years back. It evolved as a syncretic religion, blending various indigenous African beliefs with Christianity and other external influences. Vodou has its roots in West Africa, particularly in regions now known as Benin, Togo, and Nigeria. While the term voodoo doll typically refers to a puppet used for pin insertion, the practice of using dolls or effigies in magical traditions is widespread in African beliefs. During the times when prehistoric religions had existed for hundreds of years, religions like Christianity and Islam started to emerge in Africa. However, an important thing to notice is that these comparatively new religions use prehistoric African religious concepts so people could relate to them. This might seem simple, but in itself, this just proves that everything, from humans to their beliefs, has roots in Africa. The spread of Islam across Africa was a gradual process spanning several centuries. It entered the continent through various means, including trade routes, migrations, missionary efforts, and warfare. The earliest contact between Islam and Africa dates back to the time of the Prophet Muhammad in the 7th century CE. Muslim traders from the Arabian Peninsula established trade networks that connected the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean with the East African coast. One of the earliest regions to embrace Islam was North Africa, where Muslim armies from Arabia expanded into areas like Egypt and Morocco, introducing Islam along the way. The Umayyad Caliphate gained control over North Africa, leading to the conversion of local Berber tribes and the establishment of Islamic states, such as the Fatimid Caliphate. Islam further spread inland through intermarriage, trade, and the establishment of Islamic educational centers. It served as a line for cultural exchange, introducing new architectural styles, educational institutions, and trade networks. This gave rise to diverse Islamic movements, such as the Sufi Brotherhood, which incorporated local customs and beliefs into their spiritual practices. Before the widespread diffusion of Islam across the African continent, Christianity played a dominant role. The Nag Hammadi texts, also known as the Nag Hammadi Library or Nag Hammadi Gospels, were discovered in 1945 near the ancient town of Nag Hammadi in Upper Egypt. These texts are crucial in shedding light on a sect of early Christianity known as Gnosticism. In December 1945, a group of local farmers made a phenomenal discovery in the desert near Nag Hammadi, a large jar containing a collection of ancient manuscripts. These texts, written in Coptic, an Egyptian language using the Greek alphabet, contained a diverse range of religious and philosophical works. Among them were agnostic Christian writings that had previously been unknown or lost to history. The Nag Hammadi Library, comprised a total of 52 texts, which included various Gnostic Gospels, apocryphal works, and philosophical treatises, such as the Gospel of Thomas. This collection of sayings attributed to Jesus may be the oldest known source of his words. Within this tradition, members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church hold a significant place. According to their religious narrative, they claim to possess the Ark of the Covenant, a sacred chest designed to hold the Ten Commandments given by God to Moses. According to their belief, this precious relic was transported to Ethiopia and has been safeguarded there for centuries. The prevailing belief is that the Ark was carried from Jerusalem to Ethiopia during the era of King Solomon. From the monumental discovery of Lucy, the ancient fossil, to the grandeur of Egyptian civilization, we have touched the very essence of our collective past. Did you know about these prehistoric religions? Do you think these religions shaped how we think about God or gods and the concept of the presence of someone taking care of the universe? Let us know what you think about this in the comment section right below.
Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned. Thank you.